So let's um, use an example. of a triangle connected to a quadrilateral. I'm going to call the triangle element 1 and quadrilateral element 2. And so I'm going to sort of introduce some notation convention here. Whenever I have a number with a circle around it, that's the element number. Okay. When I number on the outside of the element, so I'm going to number 1, two, three, four, five. Those are the global node numbers. Okay? So there's five total nodes. And I just numbered them. Okay? And when I, the numbers on the inside are going to be the local numbers. So one, two, three. So what I mean there is local to this, to element one. So if you're sitting inside element one and you can't see any of the other elements, then you just number the nodes around you, right? One, two, three. Same thing in the quadrilateral. We'll have one, two, three, four. And we assemble through using continuity in the field variable, right? So if this is a structure, maybe we're solving for displacements then U1 and element 1, right? So local node U1 and element 1 is going to have to be equal to the global displacement of node 1. That's pretty obvious. It's out here by itself, right? But otherwise, we have that the second node in element 1 has to be equal to the first node in element 2, which has to be equal to the global displacement of node 2. Likewise, for the local node 3 in element 1 has to be equal to the local node 4 in element 2, and that has to be equal to the global displacement of what? 3, right? And the other ones are trivial, because they're by themselves, okay? So what we have, gosh, I really don't want to write this out, but <laughs> some right now some of these elements, stiffness matrices, take a long time. Um, how can I do it quicker? So here I'm just saying that the, the total stiffness matrix of element 1, and I, I use a little triangle symbol there just to remind you that it's the triangle. I'm just going to say K11, E1, K12, E1, K13, E1. And on the, at the element level, that's equal to U1, E1, U2, E1, U3, E1. But those correspond to the global displacement U1, U2, U3. And likewise, for element 2, which is the rectangle, quadrilateral. I think I'm going to skip right now the I'm going to skip right now this turn this thing. And just say that you know, where we have local 
U1, E2, U2, E2, U3, E3, U4, E2, E2. All right. So this guy is global U what? Local U1 is global U2. U4, U5, U6, I'm sorry, U3, U3. So U, local U4 is global U3 for element 2. All right. So when we assemble, we have the global stiffness matrix is K11, E1, K12, E1, K13, E1, 0, 0, K2. So now we have K22, E1 plus K11, E2, K23, E1 plus K14, E2, K12, E2, K13, E2, K31, E1. So we have 3, 2, E1 plus K41, E2, K33, E1 plus K44, E2, K42, E2, K43, zero, and K, two, one, two, K, And that's multiplying U1, U2, U3, U4, U5. All right. So is there any questions about what I did there? I mean, I just added the two stiffness matrices or assembled it, just like we did before. It's just there's some bookkeeping to do because of the no numbering scheme, right? And quite frankly, the reason I sort of went through it like this was to show you that, you know, imagine if you had to do this in a whole body with lots of connectivities. It would be awful, right? So in general, we don't, we don't do it like that. In other words, we don't do the bookkeeping ourselves. We use the computer to do the bookkeeping. Right? And the way we do that is we make use something called a connectivity array. I use so many symbols in this class, I don't know what. Here, I'm going to use B, C. And for this problem, let's see if I can redraw it. So for this problem, the connectivity array is going to look like this. One, two, three, 
two, four, five, three. So the row is the element number. So first row corresponds to the first element. Second row corresponds to the second element. The column corresponds to the local coordinate system. So first row, first column would be node 1 of the first element, which has global node number what? One, right? The second column has gold number. The second column corresponds to the second local node number, and it has global node number what? And the third. Right. So then I go to the second. The second row is the second element. Local node number one has global node number two, so I put it there. Local node 2 has global node 4, so I put it there. Right? Is there any questions about Everybody see how I did that? OK. And so if I use that to my advantage, connectivity array. Yeah, I mean, it's it probably um, a misnomer to call it a matrix because it is ragged, right? There's no where, right here, there's no entry. It's not a zero. It, there's just nothing there, right? So in a computer, depending on the program language, you, you have to figure out how to handle that, the fact that it's ragged. Right? Um, Mathematica will let you have a ragged array, no problem. Right? MATLAB, um, you know, any other, really any other programming language, it's not like a functional language, is not going to let you have a ragged array. So, what you do, I mean, one way to do it is you just pad it with something, say, you know, typically your node numbers are always positive. They start from zero or one and go up. They're almost never negative, right? I mean, you can come up with whatever node numbering scheme you want, but that would be odd, right? To have negative node numbers, you could do it. But so one way one way to do it is you just pad those entries with say minus ones, and then somehow in your code you you just have enough logic to say if if there's a minus one here, I just don't do anything go to the next line. Um, you know, another way, like in C, you'd want to have contiguous memory, so you'd just string them all together. So you'd have one, two, three, two, four, five, three, right? All together. And then you'd have a separate, that uh, separate array that had the links. So you'd have three, four. And then you'd say, okay, I'm going to iterate three times. This is my first element. Then I'm going to iterate four times. It's my second element. That's, that's how you do it in C. You, you, could, do that. you could actually use that scheme in any, any language. <clears throat> so here I've already, because I, I didn't want to waste the time typing it in. But I, so I've already basically put in, you know, KT11. That's like K triangle 11, and KR11 is K rectangle 11. Right? And then I put in the same connectivity array: one, two, three, two, four, five, three. And so then what I need to do is first allocate a global stiffness matrix. Um, how big is my global stiffness matrix? Five by five. 
And then I'm going to use a loop structure. So here I've called the connectivity array connect. So I'm going to loop over the rows of the connectivity array. Sorry. Hmm. Not sure what I'm doing wrong. Sorry. You guys probably can't, it's too small. You probably can't see them. This is, this is an example that I worked before I came here, and this is what I'm doing now. And I think they're the exact same, but they're not working for some reason. So anyway, um, I'll just show you the one I already worked. So this is the result. And if you check this against what I wrote down, they're the exact same. But now I'm just making, making use of this connectivity array when I assemble it. All right. So. I don't know if I'll have enough time to finish it, but I'd like to start an example. And if I don't finish it, I'll I'll finish it. Uh, I'll record the end of uh, end of it, for, and you guys can watch it. Right? So we're actually going to write a 2D finite element code, basically, to solve not a general purpose one, but to to solve a problem. Right? So. Uh, 